And we're here with uh, Marvin Emery. He's the general counsel for Repress. And we're at the Tech Policy Summit Broadband Innovation here in San Mateo, California. And we finished up a town hall discussion earlier on the, I guess, the state of the broadband stimulus, state of the stimulus, and uh, you guys released a report today on the national broadband strategy. Uh, did you want to give some details? Sure. Uh, and and then back to Sam, obviously, I have my on the national broadband strategy. And today we issued a report uh, and we have a report on the national broadband strategy. Which is an analysis of the last eight years of policy failures when it comes to high speed internet deployment, competition, uh, and value in terms of speed and price. And the report uh, is very rigorous. We go through all of the FCC's, uh, you know, the turn from the FCC away from 60 years of common carriage, pro competitive policies endorsed by both the Republicans and the Democrats, to the policies of the last eight years under the Bush administration, which included premature deregulation of the middle mile market, the last round market, of the wireless market, the high speed internet access. And what we've seen is that the FCC predicted competition, predicted consumer benefits, made lots of predictions in every decision on this, you know, the regulatory path leading us to where we are today. And all of those predictions, all of those assumptions were wrong. Mm. The idea that you know, deregulation was necessary to promote competition is wrong. You know, network and network uh, markets such as uh, the internet deployment, last mile, middle mile networks, you have high fixed costs, and you need some sort of regulatory safeguards in order to have competition, say even in New York City, or in our biggest city. Uh, and as a result, we see that there's a broadband problem in our urban areas, where New York doesn't have the kinds of connections that we have in Tokyo or Paris. What speeds up our slow or our values are, are far lower. And you also see that in the rural area, there's mm -hmm. no regulatory policy, no strategy to try to make sure that all the rural Americans also have access to the kinds of connections that we should have. Now, now let's talk about that. Uh, Brett Glass from Lariat Net uh, spoke up earlier and said uh, that. And I think it's in response to something that Jeff Daly, who was moderating the discussion, said uh, about. You know, thinking radically, and 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 Brett said that uh, wireless could be a uh, it, and and it has been a solution. And uh, you mentioned that your report discusses that in some detail. Uh, would you would you like to elaborate? Sure. So wireless connection it could be competitors with the cable platform and the DSL platform. There are several reasons why they're not. One reason is that AT&T and Verizon control a lot of the spectrum. They also control a lot of the wireline connections. So they don't want to compete with themselves and deploy high-speed connections. A second reason is because companies like Verizon and AT&T control the middle mile. So if you're a wireless competitor, like say Brett Class, you have to go to AT&T or Verizon to pay for get your backhaul. Backhaul to get back to the internet. Those connections, uh, middle mile connections, have been highly deregulated. So we went from a situation about a decade ago where these carriers had 11% rates of return to a situation where now you have 700% rates of return in certain parts of the country, 300% rates of return. I believe in Wyoming where breadth class is the rates of return are somewhere between the 200% to 300% range. So breadth class, often he and I have clashed and disagreed at, at hearings and testimony because I, I ended up uh, working on a, a case brought by Free Press against Comcast having to do with Comcast network management. I think I heard something about that. Yeah. So uh, Brett Glass at the time said that he needed to do some sort of network management in the last mile because there was so much bandwidth, so much capacity. He couldn't afford to pay for the back off of capacity. And we had said at the time, well, what's going on there is a different problem. The problem there is that the middle mile is deregulated and that you're being squeezed on the back haul. The problem, you know, we don't want to solve, we don't want two wrongs here. We don't want the wrong of the backhaul being solved by the wrong of discrimination in the last mile. What we should do is solve the middle mile backhaul problem, and then you won't have to worry about 
the network management problem here at the end of the month. So to see Brett class that they're talking about the importance of the middle mile, back on the really high cost of the SK, that's something we're, we're totally in agreement that we have to bring those rates down so there's, so there's actually wireless connectivity. Communities like there that might not otherwise have connectivity. Special access markets. Special access, yeah. Special access was part of that. So, so basically what, what you're saying is the, the net neutrality debate, well, let's, let's not even call it net neutrality because that uh, openness. The openness and really... Um, and it is, openness is broader than net neutrality. When we talk about openness, we about open devices, we about open networks, open, uh, uh, open applications. All of that, but, uh, but most importantly, I think the takeaway here is that, and tell me if I'm wrong, that regulating the middle mile is a necessary precondition in any broadband strategy for ensuring a open, an open last mile. Uh, it will help reduce the pressure that some providers in the last mile feel to manage traffic. But, and and when, I, when we say regulation of the special access middle mile market, we want to be very specific where that regulation is necessary, where there isn't competition, which is much of the, of the country. We'd have to look at it on a sort of community by community basis and say, you know, do we see super high cost margins and very little competition? But, but yeah, they're all connected. Your, your conclusion you make is exactly right. They're all connected. The, the market power in the middle mile and the stifling competition for the wireless carriers to move in in the last mile it ends up forcing pressure on the last mile providers to uh, not want to pay for all that backhaul, try to manage their network, manage their uh, way, and manage their, their last mile connections in a discriminatory way. Those affect the net neutrality rate. So, so when you see like the national broadband uh, notice of inquiry put out by the FCC, you see you know about 300 questions. Did a little search on how many question marks are in, in the report. There are 274, and a lot of these are interconnected with each other. So you'll see the interconnection between special access, the deregulation of special access, and pressure on open. You'll see the connection between the deregulation of special access and intermodal competition between wireless providers and wireline providers. So I guess. Um it's complicated, but... But we have the solution. Right? It's, it's complicated in that there are lots of bad things that the last administration did. Deregulating special access, removing common carrier, uh, you know, in, in the brand X Supreme Court, this is right. removing common carrier, and then removing computer two uh, regulations on phone carriers. Uh, we've, we've seen uh, a lot of, you know, there are lots of easy fixes, just reversing uh, the bad policies that were adopted by myopic, Administration when it came to telecom policy. So we and already. That's the first step. The so next step we, uh, part of the, the check. But we already know the answer because we've already done it. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, we've been with Marvin Emery and uh, this is Andrew Feinberg from broadbandcensus.com here in San Mateo, California at the Tech Policy Summit. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.